This short video is going to show you some of the ways that you can work with a table of contents within your uh, Document X 2010 project. Uh, so I'm going to make a start um, on a sample project I've opened here. It's just got a couple of topics, conceptual topics, that I've already created and it also contains an assembly that I'm automatically going to generate documentation for. Um, so if I switch to the table of contents window here I can see I've currently got an empty table of contents apart from this placeholder node which is where all of the automatically generated parts of the table of contents are going to go. Now there are a couple of ways you can work with the table of contents depending on what you really want to do. If you just want to add a couple of new items to the table of contents or to add an existing conceptual topic then working directly within this table of contents um, window docked into the main application is probably the quickest and easiest way to do it. But you can also open up the table of contents editor in its own editor window if you've got more extensive um, work that you want to do with it. So I'm just going to demonstrate that here. Click on that toolbar button and the table of contents opens up in its own window and as you click each node you can then see a full editor for all of those nodes properties. Now whilst you're working in the table of contents editor that's docked here you can also see the properties for the selected node within the window below here. If I click on a particular node I can see the properties for that table of contents node. So they're just kind of alternative ways to work with the table of contents depending on whether you're doing a quick property change or a quick add to the table of contents or whether you're doing some more extensive work with it. So the first thing I'm going to do with our table of contents here is to add the topics that I've created to the table of contents. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add a book node and that's a node under which I'm going to add my topics um, and the book node isn't a link to a topic in itself, it just exists to group the nodes beneath it. So I'm going to click on the um, new table of contents button there and this is a book with just a heading and I'm going to call this heading node introduction and I'm going to close down that um, that window. And just to show you how that same process would work if you're working in the table of contents docked window here, it's going to get rid of that node and create it once again. So I can do exactly the same thing in here, create a new table of contents node, introduction, and there it's created here. And once it's created I can change the properties of that node within the properties uh, window directly below it so I can update the title in that properties window. Okay so now I've created a, a grouping node I want to go ahead and add these two topics to the table of contents. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. The, the first one I'm going to show you is the, the easiest arguably. Um, and that involves dragging and dropping from the Project Explorer to the Table of Contents window. So I'm going to drag this first topic down to the Table of Contents tab and then I'm going to drop it onto the Introduction Heading node which I created um, just now. And you can see that node has been added here and the little link icon tells us that it's a link to a topic and I can hover over that to see which topic it's linking to. So by by dragging and dropping a topic onto the table of contents it will automatically in inherit the title of that topic for the table of contents node caption. So that's all I need to do, that topic is now um, added to the top and ready to go in the build process. So the second way to add a table of contents node to the table of contents is simply to create a new node and then to change the node type to an item in this project and I can then use the select button here to choose from the Project Explorer. I'll choose my second conceptual topic here. And the end result is exactly the same that you end up with a topic, um, uh, a table of contents node that points to that topic on the table of contents. It's just a slightly different approach. Arguably the drag and drop process is uh, probably the easiest way to go to um, add topics to the table of contents. So there are a couple of other node types that you can add to the table of contents. So I'm going to demonstrate the first one which is um, a web page or other URL. So as you might guess from the title there that will allow you to create um, a table of contents node that points to um, a website or perhaps a mail to URL for um, an internet support email address. And there we can see 
the node added to the table of contents. So when we build this project, when the user clicks on that node, that is the page that will load within the um, help browser. So once you have your nodes added to the table of contents, uh, you can rearrange them uh, using drag and drop. So if I wanted, for example, to put this new node so it appeared beneath, beneath this heading node here, I can just drag and drop it onto that node. And I can also drag it and drop it into any particular position. And you can see these indicators that appear as I'm dragging and dropping that tell me where that node will appear if I drop at that point. So I'm going to put it between these two topic nodes here. And you can also use the movement buttons here if you prefer to move nodes up and down in relation to the siblings or to move them indented or outdented in relation to their sibling nodes on the table of contents. One final thing to mention in relation to drag and drop is that you can actually select multiple items on the table of contents and work with those all together. So for example if I wanted to drag and drop these two nodes here um, at once I can click on the first node, hold down control, click on the second node and I can then drag those as a pair elsewhere in the table of contents. So that's a quick and easy uh, time-saving feature if you're moving a large number of nodes and reorganizing your table of contents. So that concludes this short video on working with the table of contents uh, functionality within DocumentX 2010.